You know, we have a remarkable story that's found in the Old Testament in 1 Kings chapter 20. And it's about a backslidden king. You know, Ahab and his wife Jezebel were about as backslidden as you could get. Uh, they certainly didn't follow the Lord and they were, you know, servant idols. But you know, there came a, a, a large army against uh, Israel. The capital was Samaria. And so Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered 32 other kings and he came up with horses and chariots and with an army so huge it covered the ground like a locust. And he sent a word through servants unto Ahab, king of Israel, and he said, your wives are on your, oh, your silver is mine, your gold is mine, your wives are mine, your children are mine. And Ben Hadad or and Ahab said, sent messengers back saying, okay, you know, whatever you say, I'm yours. Well, all that I have is yours, whatever you want. He just caved right away. He feared because these 33 kings are coming with this huge army. And instead of saying, oh, no, or thinking about it or praying about it or seeking counsel from God, he just said, okay, my wives and my children are yours. My silver and my gold is yours. But, you know, this is how the devil operates. He's never satisfied. You give him an inch and he'll take a mile. John 10.10 10 says the thief, that is the devil, comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Do you know that Christ has given us authority in his name? When he was on earth, he said, greater works or more works than I do will you do because I go to the Father. In other words, he was in one physical body. After he ascended and sent his Holy Spirit back, the Spirit of Christ dwells in all believers. So there's many of us doing the works of Christ. Christ is doing them through us. So Ben-Hadad sends back to the king of, of Israel, to Ahab. He sends messages and says, you know what? I sent for your wives and for your children, for your silver and your gold, and you consented. But you know what? Tomorrow at this time, I'm sending a lot of servants. They're going to go through your house and through the house of all the people in Samaria. And whatever is precious in your sight, whatever you really love, it doesn't matter if it's your jewelry, your gold, your silver, your children, your sheep, whatever it might be, whatever you really love, we're taking it. And so then Ahab was a little upset. He sent for the elders and all the elders came from the land. And he said, look how this man seeks mischief. He sent to me for my wives and for my children and for my silver and for my gold. And, and I didn't deny him. I said, okay. And the people said, hearken not unto him nor consent. In other words, change your yes to a no. Don't give in. Stop saying yes and don't give in. Say no. And so he sent word back and said, you know, all that I said at the first I will do because I gave my word. But this I will not do, which you've said the second time. So Ben-Hadad was in a rage, and he said, send a message to him and tell him that the dust of Samaria, the dust in Samaria is not enough for all the people that are with me to have one handful. That's how many thousands and tens of thousands of people are with me. There's not even enough dust in your city to give each one of us a handful. We're coming. And Ben-Hadad said, or Ahab said, don't, don't let the person who's putting on their harness boast like him that takes it off. The victory is not won. Don't, don't boast yourself. Well, you know, the Lord sent a prophet and said, I'm going to deliver Ben-Hadad into your hand. Even though Ahab was a backslidden king, I'm going to deliver him into your hand. And he said, how? And he said, by the princes. And he numbered 200 and some odd princes. And they led uh, thousands of people from Israel. Not, not nearly the thousands that came against them. A very small army. But just God had it where Ben-Hadad uh, ben and the other kings were drinking themselves drunk in their pavilions. And so the children of Israel came upon him, and it was a great slaughter, and they won the victory. If a backslidden king could listen to the word of the Lord and change his consent, his yes to a no, how much more the children of God? How much more we are possessed by Jesus Christ? Have you had enough of the devil taken from you? Has he taken your health so long that you've learned to accept it? Did you just say, yes, yes, I'm sick. Yes, I have cancer. Yes, I have a bad heart. Yes, I have diabetes. Yes, I have for whatever. Oh, yes, I have bad finances. I don't have a good job. I can't really pay my bills. Yes, my marriage is in shambles. Yes, my children aren't saved. Yes, I, I see all this. Or do we say enough? No to the devil. 
I'm claiming God's promises. I'm a child of God. I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. And I have exceeding great and precious promises that are all yea and amen in Christ Jesus. The promises to me, to my children, and all those who are far off. When Moses, when Pharaoh told Moses, you can go out and offer a sacrifice in the desert, but your wives and children will be left, will stay behind. And he said, we will go with our wives, with our children, with our flocks and our herds, and not a hoof will be left behind. Well, guess what? Not one member of our family will be left behind. Not one person will be left behind. We are declaring the word of God. We are declaring the promises of God. And no to the devil. No more. In the name of Jesus, we have victory.